that's where we sort of begun. What we recognized after that was based on what we've been hearing, so we took that short document in the fall out and invited some stakeholder input to it. We, we recognized that we needed to create other kinds of opportunities beyond an advisory committee that would provide the chance for people to provide, to give input and to stay informed of what was happening. So that's what led to this diagram, which is um, sort of these different bubbles showing, if you like, different avenues into the planning process. So the Integrated Oceans Advisory Committee being one of several ways to sort of plug in. And I'll talk about each of these in turn. So back to that Integrated Oceans Advisory Committee, or IOAC. Uh, the idea here being um, sort of a multi-sectoral advisory body, that it be consensus seeking. And then again, it includes those participants from all those different groups, uh, and that it be a bit of a forum for discussion between all of them. We recognize that in convening this committee, there's going to need to be some sort of balance between um, inclusive membership, but also a size that allows people to develop relationships and work effectively and efficiently together. So one of the things we're going to be asking you about past this presentation is what might that look like? If you were in our shoes, how, how, would, how would you construct this in order to be inclusive yet efficient? So some of the examples of what a group like this might do would be to provide input to what are the goals and objectives for this initiative? And how do we identify the priority issues that we might want to address through an integrated management planning exercise? So in addition to that, that committee, we're also proposing that um, there's likely going to be a need for more focused work and discussion on specific topics that perhaps are identified as priorities. And so to capture that, we've used this term working groups. And the idea here being that um, we're, we're convening a group that's more specific to an area and or a, a topic whether it be uh, you know, a specific fishery or marine transportation or, or something else entirely. So the, the, the responsibilities of, of working groups would be to review and maybe summarize information available on specific topics as well as develop some advice and recommendations that could um, inform a component of a broader plan that could be brought back to the planning office and to that larger committee to sort of figure out how might this fit in. Membership obviously is going to need to sort of vary depending on the topic. And, um, and again, recognizing that there's going to be some need to be inclusive here with all the people who have some interest in, in that specific topic or place. So just to give you a, a couple of examples of what a working group might do, and this is just illustrative, um, using things that people some, some of you in the room might have some familiarity with. So some of you may be aware uh, that in the north of Hecate Strait, there's a wind farm being proposed. It just so happens that that's being proposed in an area that's also very important for a crab fishery. And that there's also ferry routes that run through that, that same area. So how can we, um, in, a, in, a, in an inclusive and rational way, bring those interests together to sort of ensure that they have a way to coexist and that the possibility for conflict is minimized to the degree um, to the degree possible. So another example of a working group topic might be recognizing that there is the potential given certain development projects on the north coast for an increase in certain kinds of shipping traffic. Maybe we need to have sort of a more focused discussion around the implications of that. What does that mean for other values or uses in that area? <coughs> So these are the kinds of topics that could be uh, something suitable for a working group. We also know that there's already all kinds of different advisory processes in place. And that these are real sources of both expertise and experience on certain topics. So what we're suggesting is that <clears throat> wherever we can, we want to draw on that experience and expertise and we don't want to duplicate what's already being done somewhere else. We want to try and be complementary, and we want to ensure that whatever, whatever is happening in the Pensema initiative is both informed by um, and, and uh, in informing uh, other, exist, other advisory processes. So as a proposal or a recommendation comes out of the Pensema initiative planning process, the idea is that that would go out to the relevant advisory processes 
to invite the review and feedback from the, the, the expertise in those processes and that that comes back in to the Pensema planning to inform how we move forward. So again, just to sort of keep you on the same track with an example I've already used, if we were to develop recommendations that might have some relation or implication for a specific fishery, then it would make sense to take out uh, those recommendations to uh, any advisory processes that deal with that fishery uh, to ensure that they have an opportunity to provide input. So, in, in addition to sort of advisory processes um, there are, that, are, that are sectorally oriented, we also have some that are geographically oriented. So somebody in the back of the room mentioned Guayanas. So if, you know, there will be some sort of advisory process uh, that will accompany that, and we're going to need to make sure that we create a linkage there. Another one which you may see a paper on your table about is a marine wildlife area that's being proposed by Environment Canada for the area surrounding the Scott Islands off the northern tip of Vancouver Island. So if you have questions about that, this is another example of a process that it would make sense for Pensema to link to. Dave Smith from Environment Canada is here. He can give you more details on that initiative and, and sort of we can talk about how what it might look like to coordinate and, and link to those kinds of related initiatives. So those are two kinds of committees basically and we recognize that not everyone is going to have the time or the energy or the interest in participating in a committee like that, um, nor can we have everyone who might be interested on, on a committee. So what are the other kinds of opportunities that might invite broader public input? Uh, and <clears throat> there's a few different kinds of meetings or workshops that are being proposed here. So some of you may have been uh, in attendance at the Pensima Forum last March, or you may have at least heard of it. So this is one kind of meeting that, that invites broad public input and it allows um, us to sort of communicate out about what we're doing. Um, we also anticipate that there would be things like workshops that we could hold. And the difference between something like a working group and a workshop is whereas a working group is a group that we envision will meet you know, sort of regularly over time, a workshop is perhaps something that's you know, a day or two in length and, and very focused on a specific topic and allows an opportunity for more than just a small group of people to, to participate. And then there are, there are uh, obviously other kinds of topic or area specific meetings that may happen. I mean this is an example of a meeting that's happening in an area. So there'll certainly be more of these. Lastly, recognizing that many of us now use uh, the internet uh, for, for information and as a means of communicating, how do we make effective use of that as a means of communicating out, but also inviting feedback in? Um, so some of the ideas we have here are doing things like polls or surveys to sort of gather broader public input and, and thought about some of the things that we plan to do. We do have a website, it's listed at the bottom there, so it is a source of all kinds of information about what we're doing to date, and will continue to, to be updated through time. So that's kind of a quick and dirty overview of, of what's in the document that's on your table. Um, just to give you a sense of what happens past this meeting. Once we finish here, and as Alex mentioned, this is one of nine meetings we're holding, um, we'll sort of take back what we've heard. And if, just, just to, to sort of um, add to this, if you don't um, feel comfortable or you, you have sharing input here or you have more to say past this meeting, there are other ways to get feedback to us, either by email or, or mail or you can even call. Um, and and there's, there's a deadline for that, which is April 16th. So um, by all means, if you have further thoughts beyond our meeting here, that's another way that you can contribute um, uh, feedback. But in any case, past that deadline, we'll be sort of incorporating what we've heard, we'll revise that engagement strategy, and then we're going to begin implementing pieces of it. And one of the, the first things that we want to do is convene that advisory committee which means that between now and June, when we want that committee to come together, we're going to be coming out to communities. I mean communities in the geographic sense, but also 